morning. Hello. How are you this morning? I'm very well. Um, so I started, I was a ballet dancer a um, long time ago and then I stopped when I was in my late 20s mm -hmm. um, and it was a bit of a crossroads because it was the first time in my life I had thought I'm not sure what I, what I want to do because mm -hmm. I'd known what I wanted to do all, you know, since I was about 11 years old because dancing is a calling really so you kind of know and when I stopped dancing I um, I was doing a lot of, st I was freelancing, doing, um, putting on shows for, for big gigs. So there's a big advertising awards ceremony in South Africa called the Luries. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I did a show for them. I put together some uh, performance pieces, which was quite esoteric and obscure. I don't think it went down very well. It was a very good show, yeah. but not for a coked up, drugged up, uh, drunken audience who just want to know if they won a golden bloody award. So from there I was headhunted to a media strategy agency called Nota Bene, which is owned by WPP. And the guys who headed that up um, were really progressive and they thought, so this is now early 2000s, they thought there are loads of ideas happening that don't fit the box of a print ad or a TV ad. And experiential maybe, but a bit more than that. So and they always fall off the table, nobody does them. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity, especially Unilever client. So they thought they'd start a division, creating ideas that you'd also then produce. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to go and head that up. From there, I suggested to Steve Hatch, who was MD at the time, that they needed somebody who was kind of a flag bearer for creativity and for ideas, um, and who could help begin to organize you know, the media agency around ideas a bit more. Um, so I suggested to him um, that I should be creative director and that they should have that kind of role in the agency would signal the change. It was helpful that I suggested this to him when he was two beers down just before the Christmas party. <laughs> the perfect time to ask for <laughs> Yeah, <absolutely>. a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm always kind of sober. I mean, I don't really drink that much, so that was helpful. Um, he said, cool. I don't, I don't think he really knew what the full import of what it could mean. Um, and at MEC, I did a lot of new business, a lot of pitches, mainly, not as much client work. Mm -hmm. um, at OMD, it was great to start a job as a creative director, having not tried to change a role from the inside, and um, get client facing and just get my hands dirty on lots of clients mm -hmm. and build a team. My team that I built at OMD, we, we create ideas that complement the advertising, but yeah. we don't execute. I think that ad agencies know exactly what they're doing in terms of their craft, in terms of, in terms of distilling an idea to a 30 second perfect, or one line, or a beautiful print ad that you can look at in three, in three seconds and get it. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. We right. create the, the framework, the bigger, I guess it's like a creative framework in which those executions can sit that make it even bigger. I mean, I want to form more alliances with ad agencies because we can give them a bigger canvas to work from. And I think when you see ideas combined between the different disciplines and people who are really good at creative craft and um, people from my side who are very good at orchestrating bigger ideas with scale, you get to some great magic. Mm. You get to what I, I always call them Droga, Droga ideas, yeah. Droga 5 kind of ideas that they don't fit into a box because that's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, in my experience, um, creative, you focus on creating ideas. Creative director, you focused on putting together people who can create ideas and helping create the environment that is the best place for that and roping, you know, getting it out of other people and kind of setting it up so it can happen. Mm -hmm. um, we work individually, so each of the creators in my team leads a project, mm -hmm. but we do a lot of check-ins to review work and to build on together. Right. And they, do, they work a lot with the client team, so they don't work in isolation because the ideas need to be 
you know, working with the client teams because they make them happen and also often the ideas come from the client teams yeah. too. I guess it might be helpful to clarify that our output is not just media creative ideas, traditional media creative ideas like cool use of a bus stop. It's about ideas that get into the fabric of the UK, get, that are part of popular culture or are inspired by culture and become cultural ideas that grow bigger because they're shared, because the people who are, because the people we are talking to share in the idea. So we work on most of our big top clients, so, and we've got killer clients. Um, that's also what's exciting about working as a creative in a media agency. You have, you don't have three million other creative teams, so you have um, direct access to like the pure poison of killer briefs from, so McDonald's, PepsiCo, Walkers, Hasbro, Disney. Heinz, Channel 4, oh, Google. I mean, you can't bloody make up that list. So because of that, we're always working on a lot of different projects at once, and each team is different. So each client comms team is different. So, you know, you might be working with a strategist, or you might be working with the media implementation person, might be briefing all the media owners and having a chat with them, do a lot of connection with them, you know, because they, I mean, they know their audiences better than us, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I think in a media agency, I think there's something about, it's quite pragmatic and quite practical. Most of the times you get a brief that falls off the ad agency's um, creative strategy, um, which is good when it's good, but when it's shit, you still need to work with it. And that's just how it is. Um, and I, I quite like this constraints and the discipline of that stuff actually call me a ex-ballet dancer but maybe that's I don't know I tend to do my process is I tend to go and lead brainstorms with all the agencies so I'll, I'll um, rope in people who I know work a certain way it's like putting together a dinner party I always think a brainstorm the right kind of head you always need a hot person in there as well I yeah. think it's good for energy <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't really see man or woman. I see the need for diversity and different heads and how you connect those together. And you see some fantastically strong women doing fantastic stuff. I also think of Karen uh, Blackett in yeah. Heads Up Mediacom. Mm -hmm. Really smart, really interesting, really committed to helping talent grow. I mean, my, my uh, next hire is a guy. Um, which I'm, well you know, which is helpful. Yeah, no, I know, I thought so. Um, <laughs> um, poor bastard. No, you'll be fine. I think there's a lot of chauvinism that, and sexism that people don't even realize they have. Yeah. And that's the problem. It's the invisible stuff when people don't even realize they didn't consider something, mm. somebody. And you need a mix. And women think differently to men. They do. Mm. And I see women doing more detail than men doing top down. And that combo rocks. So I literally just finished recruiting and, and the thing that we did, which I didn't realize was back to front, but apparently it was, we set a small challenge, like quite a broad, vague challenge, on, on purpose, quite irritating actually. We said launch the hottest, coolest, fastest toy car in the world. Based on those responses, we culled brutally and got to a short list of 10. I didn't see any CVs. Only when I was due to see the people, um, before the interview, did I look at the CV quite quickly? You know, so it was more about a CV to go, oh, that's interesting, why do you do that? Or, or actually also somebody too trained in what I do. I actually didn't really want a media person or a marketing person. Yes. I want a, a, a normal person who thinks creatively, mm -hmm. who's smart, that's it. Smart, actually, number one. that human beings are creative. Yep. It is in how we are. Um, it's how we got to the first tool, stone mm -hmm. thing. And it's um, from expression to resourcefulness, that's creativity. So some are more into it than others. 
so they see the world in that way they have to create to survive or they have to connect stuff and they're okay with the pressure of it yeah and that's the difference i think they prepared to live with the consequences of being in the business of creating ideas which is there are days when you're having a bad hair day and it doesn't matter you still need to spew something out yeah. But I think at its most basic level, you can learn a lot. You can learn your own creative process. So you can learn how to select ideas better. You can learn the discipline of not, um, of, of sticking to an idea. You can learn the art of collaboration and the skill of that. So there are a lot of things you can learn, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't be in a media agency if I didn't believe that.